and a welcome in or a welcome back. It's a monkey mar. Before we get into today's video, please make sure you click that subscribe button, the like, and the bell for notifications. Hey guys, I decided to go through my little case files that I keep and look at everyone who has been found and who is still missing and I am going to touch on the missing mom's mysterious disappearances and the ones that I follow that are still missing are Kelsey Barrett, Melissa Caddick, Suzanne Morphew, Erica Thompson, Maya Millette, Jennifer Dulos, Layla Cavett, and Echo Lloyd. I usually touch on Melissa Caddick, Maya Millette. I have not touched on Suzanne Morphew in a while, but I will in one of these videos. But I'm going to start with Jennifer Dulos. I'm going to touch on Layla Cavett, Echo Lloyd, and Kelsey Barrett. I am going to do each one in their own video. So today I am going to touch on Jennifer Dulles and with that guys, let's get into it. Okay, so let's get into the disappearance of Jennifer Dulles. She went missing in Connecticut on May 24th, 2019. She was 50 years old at the time of her disappearance. Authorities suspect that she was killed in a violent attack at her home in New Cannon. Her husband, Fotis Dulles, and his girlfriend, Michelle Traconis, were arrested on charges of tampering with evidence and hindering prosecution in connection with the disappearance. Later, the two, along with Fotis' attorney, Kent Mahaney, faced additional charges related to Jennifer's murder. Police suspected that Fotis Dulles had been lying in wait for Jennifer and attacked her when she arrived at her home. After dropping her children off at school, police allege that Fotis Dulles and Traconis went to Hartford, Connecticut to dispose of garbage bags containing items with Jennifer Dulles' blood on them on the night that Jennifer disappeared. Police further allege that Mahini participated in the murder conspiracy. Jennifer and Fotis Dulles were in the midst of both a contentious divorce and child custody proceedings. Now the latest update besides any court hearings I'm talking about as far as Jennifer Dulles being missing was January 20th, 2021. Considering that Jennifer Dulos has been gone for about a year and a half now, most of you do know the story of Jennifer and Fotis and Traconis and how he was seen with his truck on the bus cams. He was riding that vintage bike, which I don't know how he thought that was the perfect plan. And everything that they have on surveillance, they still cannot figure out where. Jennifer Dulos is, and I thought, honestly, after photos committed suicide, which I think was a suicide gone bad, I think that if he was going to do it and he didn't want them to find him half alive, I think he would have done it the night before. It's almost like he waited to do an accident overdose to where maybe they would have got to him and they would have saved him. But I think that honestly went wrong because in my opinion like I just said if you're gonna do something like that and that's what you want to do I don't think he would do it just before the court hearing I think he would have probably have done it a couple days before but hey that's my opinion and we are all entitled to our own opinion so let's get into the newest on the Jennifer Dulos case and this was back two months ago. Tuesday morning, investigators swarmed 80 Mountain Spring Road in Farmington, bringing renewed attention to the disappearance of Jennifer Dulos. Among state police cemetery geophysics expert Robert Perry, known nationally as the Bone Finder, Perry uses ground penetrating radar to search for disturbed soil 
and anomalies beneath the ground and said he was searching the Mountain Spring Road property, previously owned by Fotis Duelist Four Group Company, outside and inside for possible remains of Jennifer Dulos. He said he identified four areas around the property for a possible disturbance. State police say they were at the home following old leads a year and a half after Jennifer's disappearance. Sky 61 captured the scene from above Tuesday as investigators at one point were seen digging around the home. They dig, dig the sites, each one of them, and went down about three feet, Perry said. Now, I do know that from watching the interview with Perry, and I will attach that link down below, that he said that I think most of them that were found were piping. And by honestly, two months from this time, if anything was found, I do think that we would know about it. On the day of Jennifer's disappearance, photos to Alyssa's phone pinged twice near this home, according to police and the couple's home along Jefferson Crossing home is only a few minutes away from the property. They wanted to do some more work out in the woods. In my personal experience, burying somebody in the backyard, especially with all the wooded area, I don't think it was there to begin with, Perry said. I think it was further out. So I'm not sure if Perry is going to go back or if they are done searching the property. But like I said, the interview with him is interesting. It's a little more detailed than what I just told you. So you guys might want to check it out if you have not already seen it. So the latest on Michelle Traconis, which in my opinion, I honestly thought that after Fotis Doulis' suicide, that if she knew where Jennifer was, maybe they would have cut a deal with her. I don't know what they did. I'm not going to assume. I just think it's actually, I don't know, a bit bizarre that you would think if she did know where Jennifer was, she would have said something. But, I don't know. Or Mahini. But neither one has, so... But the family of Michelle Traconis, the notorious other woman in the disappearance of missing Connecticut mom Jennifer Dulos, insists in a new interview that she is innocent and has no idea what happened to the still missing new Cannon woman. This has shattered our life because my sister is not the person that they are saying. Traconis says Traconia tells 48 hours in an upcoming exclusive interview. She would never be capable of anything they've said that she has done the sister says in the 48 hour special what does the other woman know the disappearance of jennifer doulos so what i found on michelle troconis and her court dockets are actually a lot so i am going to attach the link to this below in the description and there's two pages of it. I do not see anything for an upcoming hearing yet. But I do know that she is out on a $2.1 million bond. And she's trying to get the ankle bracelet removed that monitors her 24 hours. So they accepted the plea, but she was denied on 226.21 that she has to wear the ankle bracelet and another thing I was thinking real quick and I know people are gonna get mad when I say this photo stoolish really was a good-looking guy it's sad money a beautiful wife beautiful home children I think that if he honestly thought that suicide was going to work I think he would have left a letter of really what happened to Jennifer if his intentions were to commit suicide. Even an article that I read recent that says, hang on, actually let me show you. This part right here. A photo stoolist died on January 30th, 2020 after a suicide attempt at his Farmington home. How, if he died 
how is it a suicide attempt? I do not think that he expected that suicide to go through. Again, why, in my opinion, I don't think he left a letter of what really happened to his wife, the mother of his five kids. Just really weird with that whole situation and does not sit well with me, but hey, that's my opinion. And guys, I will keep up to date on anything new that comes out in the Jennifer Dulos case and I do hope that she is found so that her family and her children can have closure. All right, guys, and with that, it is a wrap. I want to thank you all for coming in. Thank you for watching. Please like or dislike whichever you prefer and subscribe. Everyone have a good day or a good night wherever you are in the world and stay vigilant. I am out.